All right. So this is the day four recap of the Brazil trip. If you haven't already, um, I've been doing one per day, just sharing a little bit of what's going on while we're here, and then we'll do more full edits later. So day four, what was in store? So woke up, got some work done, um, and we took off around noon to go visit the first place that was kind of on the list for local charities and organizations to go check out. Day four, wow, you all what day it is. done at this flat we've been staying at. And we are off to Recife to visit a charity. Recife? Recife, final answer. This local charity, um, I'll drop just a clip or two really quick in there so you can see. Um, there's a group of 12 mothers, and these 12 mothers have worked very, very, very hard with the little bit of money that they have just to open up a place where their children can go during the day. There is a strong interest in ABA. There's a little bit of, um, there is a little bit of training there, but they need a lot of help and resources. So essentially we help them film a couple promo videos asking just in Portuguese what it is that they want so they can put that out there. And then uh, Megan and I are figuring out how we could collectively or through our network figure out how to get them some money so where they can go out and propose to the government what it is that they actually need. It sounds like a whole different process than what we're used to. Um, in the states so that was very eye-opening um, it's very interesting that just the similarities with the US on how crucial it is that um, mothers caregivers and that sort of support family network um, is in getting resources and accesses to resource access to resources um, that said it's a the luxuries that you have in a center in the US the typical center um, is light years uh, difference than what's going on down here from what I've seen. So we were there really quickly. It was an, an in and out. Um, it's very awesome to see the same kindness, the hearts out there for working with this population. Um, that doesn't change across borders, nationalities, ethnicities, languages, anything like that. Um, so we took off from Jao Pessoa, um, which I know I'm messing up the the pronunciation there to Recife, um, which is where we're at now. This is where the peak training is going on. So when we got here, we tried to stop by a center that I know Kyle Miguel had a hand in helping start. He's no longer involved, um, but we didn't make it there quite in time because of traffic. It's a little crazy down here. Um, but we're now in this beautiful, beautiful uh, city. I've not got to explore much yet. I'm gonna show you a quick glimpse of what it looks like. So, pretty typical kind of coastal town. These, this sort of uh, skyline is very common all over. It's just, uh, it's all around there, you know, the other side. So, the peak training is going on today. My uh, day is just going to consist of a lot of catching up, getting some stuff done for next gen. I'm very behind on that. Um, and popping in, it's a very cool, great vibe that's going on down there. Um, oh, one thing I missed last night. We realized <laughs> this whole time we could be using technology to help with our conversations with some of the locals. Um, so this idea of like a behavioral cusp, right? Like you can access new things because of new reinforcers and contingencies as a result of this behavior that you learned. Um, in a way, it's kind of like a technology cusp. Um, because of the technology, now I can speak more freely and more quickly with the people around me because we've been using um, the help of Veronica for translating. So I will drop a little clip on there of just what it was that um, we were talking about. It was a blast, it's really cool. Um, I was telling everybody that the one thing that I missed most out of all of this is I can't really talk and share stories and learn as much as I want to because um, the, the pace is just so much slower when you're working with somebody to translate. Um, and my hat's off to Veronica. There's just so much. She's been translating and going like 15, 20 hour days. And anyhow, it was, it was interesting to see that we could, I don't know, probably four or five times more quickly converse with each other because you would just talk into the app. It would do the translation almost perfectly. Okay, so I'm going to come back. Don't look it. 
O que você achou da camisa? What did you think of the shirt? Oh, it's so good. <laughs> it's so good. The translator and the shirt is amazing. I'm gonna wear it uh, all the time, all the time. <risos> Com quantas pessoas você vai falar amanhã? How many people are you going to talk to tomorrow? Oh. You can go to any country. Quais são suas expectativas para amanhã, Megan? What are your expectations for Megan tomorrow? Eu agora perdi o meu emprego porque esse tradutor está fazendo meu trabalho. <risos> So if you ever travel in a abroad and you need something, it's a Google Translate app. I've used it always for menus and like you can take pictures and kind of translate. Um, I had no clue, it was just one more button to be able to do this back and forth conversation. But we talked for three hours back and forth once we figured this out. Um, so it was a very good night for just really getting to know people a lot better um, and relaxing before uh, Megan does all of her presentations um, and we kind of finish this this home. It's already two days until we're basically out of here, which is sad. Um, but I don't know, it's always go, go, go. It's exciting. Excited to get back to other things as well. So yeah, that's the, that's the update um, for day four. It's being shot on day, day three. Um, I'm about to go crank on some edits back here. And I'll see you all soon. Enjoy whatever, you know, I throw at the end of this. Thanks for the support. Love y'all. Also, a quick note on the culture, because people are, are always asking, you know, what's going on and what that's like. Um, I posted a series of photos with some of this on the Facebook page, so you can go check that out for a little bit more. Um, but the level of... corruption as well as um, just like all around messiness for lack of a better more technical term in the social systems down here is pretty insane um, it's just been very eye-opening um, I think we we mentioned already how before we even got into Jawa um, there was a prison break where everybody got out and there's a a series of killings of police officers right after that um, and then we met on the street a child that was about nine years old that was very clearly going through um, withdrawals and was asking for money to feed that addiction um, the at night the laws shift at 11 p.m. to where you can just run red lights because stopping is most likely going to result in something very bad happening to you. Um, and that's something that even in certain areas of the U.S., very hard areas that I've been in um, a little bit, it was so different. Um, so it just makes me kind of think and cherish on what I do have, the securities that we have. Um, and it's a unfortunate way to but a perspective taking activity in just the amount of help and influence the behavior analysis could potentially provide to the world um, so I didn't want to end on a sad note here uh, per se but it's always a change in perspective